Hey everyone, Sartide here. So the other day I posted my longsword builds for Sunbreak Title Update 1, and when I was preparing that I was quite surprised because it seems like there's very little information on the internet for how you actually calculate status damage uh, in Monster Hunter games, and basically nothing on how status compares to element. Uh, even more than that, a lot of the discussion about status is like, oh, status is just really, really hard to calculate. And while it is probably harder than element to calculate, once you actually figure out how to do it, it's actually relatively straightforward. So I thought I would make this dedicated video on how to calculate status, how to calculate element, and how to compare the two to figure out which one does more damage. Uh, and yeah, so for this video, I'm going to assume you already know the basics of damage calculation. So I'm going to assume you already know what EFR and EFE is. If not, I'll uh, link some video somewhere. Uh, but yeah, and so in this video, we'll have like a PowerPoint on top. Uh, on the left of your screen, you can see basically a PDF, uh, link to that in the description, which has all the math equations, and on the right, an Excel spreadsheet that's actually doing the calculations, and that's also linked in the description. Uh, but yeah, so basically, the main point of this video is helping us answer questions like, for example, say you want to ha hunt an afflicted Arzurus solo, uh, which build does most damage? A raw build with like 75 EFR, an element build which has less EFR but some EFA, and a status build which has some EFR and some poison. How do we know which one does what? Uh, so in the spreadsheet we've already calculated this stuff already, so we can see that for example if we look at Arzuros, um, the optimal build uses Luna, let's go to the left, uh, against an Arzuros an ice build will do 7% extra damage compared to a full raw build. And a poison build will do 8% more damage, and a blast build will do 2% more damage. So the best one is going to be the poison build, which does 8% more damage. But how do we actually do that? So yeah, let's go through it. Um, basically, in short, when we're calculating damage numbers, um, what we want to do is a simple three-step process. Uh, step one, determine our builds EFR, EFE, and status. In other words, just calculate the damage normally. Um, again, I'm going to assume you already know how to do this, uh, if not, links everywhere. Once we do that, we want to figure out how much EFE or status is worth in terms of EFR. So basically, how much EFE is worth so-and-so EFR. And once we do that, uh, we can compare these totals. So the EFR plus the element, or the EFR plus the status. Uh, we're going to call those sums the EFD, the effective damage, and we can compare the EFDs directly. So yeah, uh, so step one, I'm going to show you how to do. Uh, but the question is, how do we figure out how much EFE or status is worth in terms of EFR? Uh, so first up, we just go to raw. So quick, quick summary, uh, raw is described by some value called EFR, the effective raw. Uh, it's some relationship between your actual raw damage, your critical, and your sharpness. For Longsword, by my calculations, the highest EFR you can get is 735.3, and it should depend on nothing else. It just depends solely on your weapon, right? Uh, trick question. It, it's sort of variable depending on different circumstances, so it's not as trivial as people might uh, say it is. Uh, at least if you're trying to calculate it uh, very efficiently, like in this spreadsheet. Basically, raw does depend on some considerations, um, two mainly. One is the monster you're fighting if you're using a monster exploit. If you're using a species exploit skill. Uh, so the species exploit ramp ups give you 5% more damage if you're fighting a compatible monster. So if you assume you're always going to use a species exploit skill against certain monsters, your EFR will be decreased because the species exploit skill won't work on it. So you sort of do something to define which monster you're fighting. And also, um, you're usually going to use the skill weakness exploit, which gives you affinity, in other words, EFR, if you're attacking a monster's weak point. So you sort of have to define the monster hits and value if you're calculating EFR. Uh, it's very specific, but at least in the spreadsheet, it makes things slightly more complicated if you want to like calculate EFR, EFD for every single monster at the same time. We sort of need to define which monsters are weak to monster exploit and which hit zones are above 40. Uh, but yeah, so other than that, the raw is relatively simple. We just calculate our EFR, and our EFR is our EFD. To calculate element, it is not too complicated for the most part. Uh, so we're going to go through the math right now. 
basically the total damage when you deal by an attack is just going to be your raw damage plus your element damage and the raw damage damage calculation is basically this so raw damage on average is your efr times the motion value times your the hit zone value you're attacking meanwhile the element damage you can see over here it's basically the same thing instead of efr with efv and so the motion value we have your elemental modifier and so of your raw hit zone value you have your elemental hit zone value so to calculate how much one point of EFV is worth compared to EFR, uh, basically, where the easiest thing to consider is if you have two builds. Uh, actually, let's go to this spreadsheet quickly. So in the spreadsheet, we have, LM we have two things to help you calculate element. You have one sheet called LMONs, and you have one sheet that's called LOFs. And in LOFs, we have all of the elemental information that you want to consider. So um, in raw, we have basically the weapon's raw stat, and element, and we have the weapon's elemental stat, the EFE, uh, for each build. So we're going to say Thunder 3 has a raw of 72.6 and a Thunder of 94.6. Uh, we also have some parameters that describe uh, other things about the weapon, so it wants to exploit, elemental exploit, and stuff like that. Now, basically, on the elemental mon sheet, we have each monster, so we look through our uh, We have basically who we're, what weak point we're attacking. Um, whether we can have, have an exploit skill or not. And then we have the elemental hit zone values. So ice is 66.5, uh, and against ice, for example, we have an elemental hit zone of 20. Uh, in columns K through uh, 80, we have the elemental hit zone that, um, the elemental hit zone that is relevant to the weapon we're fighting. So for example, if we use ice 2, which is the weapon we're using, uh, we're going to look at the ice hit zone value, which is 20. Easy. Um, but basically, what the sheet then does is it applies the slide modifier. Uh, if your build uses the steel elemental exploit, and if the monster's elemental hit zone is too low. So if the monster's elemental hit zone is below 20 and you want to use elemental exploit, it'll basically decrease the elemental hit zone value by 10% or so, or however much it should be. Uh, and this will basically reduce the amount of damage rel uh, that's relevant to the skills you're using. Uh, bottom line, that's shown in AE through AX for us right now because our skill does not use, because our build does not use elemental exploit, which you can see in the sheet. Ice 2, elemental exploit is 0, 0. Um, it's going to be speed 20. So we can basically ignore <laughs> this section of the sheet. Now, once we have this, uh, we can go through this equation. Basically, let's say our damage number is going to be the same uh, if we change our EFR and EFE. That means that the raw damage uh, plus the amount of damage of build A is the same as the raw elemental from build B. So the change in raw damage is going to be the change in elemental damage. Uh, we can basically substitute equations 2 and 3 into this equation. So raw damage is EFR times NB on 100 times RHV on 100, which is what we see here. Same deal with the right-hand side, we get this. Um, and then we can finally solve for the EFR, basically just rearrange the equation to get this equation. Super straightforward, um, KLM is just this value. It's a ratio between the elemental mod of your attacks and your motion value of your attacks. For Longsword, if you're using Spirit Helm Breaker style, I say that's 3.5. Basically, that means you just need to chuck this equation in, put our values in, and it's super easy. So based on the PowerPoint up here, we're going to say that EFR is 755.9, you can put that in. Um, EHCV is 20, RHCV is 66, and KLM is 3.5. We put that into an equation, basically tap into the calculator, uh, or tap into Excel. And if we look at this sheet for ICE2 against R0 815.9. Super simple. Uh, this equation, the equation in the spreadsheet is slightly more complicated because it takes into account that issue with um, raw um, and monster exploit, but yeah, that's basically the equation. Uh, and so, like this, we calculate our EFD for element. Uh, it's literally just equation five. Put in your numbers, and you're good. Um, but yeah, uh, so the EFD is just the EFR plus that, and that's all you need. So yeah, the. EFD for ice to this build over here is uh, 815.9. 
Uh, moving on to status. Uh, this one is slightly more complicated, but honestly not too bad. So, uh, basically if you don't know how status works, um, every time you attack an enemy, about one third of the time, you're going to inflict some status on the enemy. If this goes past the threshold, the enemy is inflicted with a status, and if it's poison or blast, it may take some damage. Um, in previous games, uh, there was some quirk with poison where poison status wouldn't build up if the monster was already poisoned. In this game, that is not the case, so you can treat poison and blast identically. Um, in the spreadsheet, we have three sheets each for poison and blast. Uh, we have poison mons, we have poison webs, which is the same as Ella webs. So we have basically the raw value and the poison value. Um, and in poison tables, uh, I'll get to that in a second. Basically, um, so calculating, so this one is a bit more abstract, but basically um, what we're gonna do roughly is figure out how much damage poison is gonna do over entire hunt and compare the overall damage we do via status and compare that to the overall damage we do via raw. So the first question just becomes how much status damage do you do? And that's relatively straightforward. The amount of status damage you do over entire hunt is how much damage each status does multiplied by how many statuses you do. Simple. So you do seven statuses and each one does 200 damage. You're going to do seven times 200, 1400 damage. Uh, but how much damage, how many, how many statuses do you do during a hunt? Okay, so basically in Monster Hunter, again, we have thresholds and you pass the threshold to inflict the status. Uh, this threshold increases each time uh, by some value. Um, so that value is the threshold growth. Um, eventually, um, if your threshold is so high, um, it'll cap out at some match threshold value. So for Arzeros, the initial threshold is 100 and the threshold growth is 234. So the first poison will take 100 poison points. Uh, the second one will take 100 plus 234, so 334, and so on. Um, unlike with element, status thresholds depend on the quest, which means, at least for status, we always have to specify a quest. Uh, for the, these calculations, I assume you're fighting the hardest version of the monster, or usually the afflicted monster. But yeah, so basically um, what I quickly do is I make a table in this sheet, uh, poison tables. So we have initial change, we have maps. Uh, these are just identifiers that help it be read by the spreadsheet. So uh, our uh, thresholds are 100, 234, 962. So that is this uh, row, index four. So to get one poison, we need to do 100 poison. To get two poisons, we need to do 434 status. To do three, we want to do 1002, and so on. Uh, basically, we can read out this table. So here I just write off total statuses is some function of status built and the thresholds. So status built being you know, this number, 1002, for example, and the thresholds being 100, 234, and 962. What's status built? Okay, so this is where it gets slightly tricky. Uh, basically, the status you do is how many hits you do, multiply your status per hit, divided by three, because status is only inflicted one third of the time, minus the decay. So status decays um, over time at about 0.5 every second. Um, so I'm gonna assume Hunt takes 10 minutes, so status decay is gonna be 10 minutes times 0.5 every second, so 300. Uh, but yeah, so status per hit. Um, and status per hit is just build status times your status mod. So status mod is basically a modifier, just like elemental mod. It's the status version of motion values. So we have equation nine, which links status built to the number of hits, but the question, everything else here is known, like we know build status, we know status mod, we know status decay. Uh, but what's hits? So the hits in your hunt is calculated from the monster's HP and the build's EFR. Basically, this just means that, um, so the monster's HP is going to be how much raw damage you do plus how much status damage you do. Uh, we're going to assume that status damage is much lower than raw damage for now. But, so we're going to say monster HP is basically equal to raw damage. Um, and we're going to say the raw damage is equal to the hits you do times the EFR times motion value times the raw hits and value. In other words, hits times damage per hit over the entire round. Because of that, we can now just rearrange the equation for hits. So hits equals 10,000 times monster HP divided by EFR, emotion value, and hit zone value. And because we have the value of hits, we can put equation 10 into equation nine and say status felt is, well, this is equation nine. Let's do the substitution. We get this, uh, simplify it, and we basically get this equation. Uh, we have this value K status, which is just like K element. It should be the exact same value for most weapons. So again, that's 3.5. 
and everything in this equation is known. So if basically we just need to work backwards from here. So we can calculate the status delta from this equation. We put the status delta into the table to calculate total statuses. We put the total statuses into this equation to calculate status damage. So let's go to poison webs. Um, let's go to, sorry, let's go to poison ones. Let's go to Arzuros again. Uh, so Rorty down to 6 HP, the thresholds are all there, the damage is there, 750 per hit. Um, so Luna, so this is a status delts. So that is just the results of equation 11. Um, so 3,954. And if we go to poison tables, 3,954 um, on this row corresponds to basically it's above six and less than seven, not in the right row, yep. So let's show you that again. Yep, so 3,728 means six props, 4,290 means seven props. So 3,900 means we get six props, uh, which is what we get again over here. So six props for Luna and six times 750, which is how much damage we did, gives us um, some damage number, which we can subtract to calculate the overall HP. So yeah, basically that means that a monster now has 42,360 damage that we must do via a roll. So this is the sort of weird thing that happens with status though. Um, if you recall back in equation 10, we say monster HP is approximately equal to raw damage. And we said that raw, but that's not quite true uh, because we used not 42,360, but the actual basic raw damage, which the basic HP, which is 46,860. So we, okay. Uh, basically what I'm trying to say is that because we do poison damage, there is less HP we do via raw damage. If we do less raw damage, we if we do less raw damage, we do fewer hits. If we do fewer hits, we do less status damage. Basically, the more status damage we do, the less status damage we do. And the less status damage we do, the more status damage we do. So this equation sort of becomes like a recursive function. Uh, basically, this equation uh, is put into this equ okay, equation 11 is put into equation 8, which is put into equation 7, which is put back into equation 11, and it's an infinite loop. Uh, in theory, you could code the infinite series into Excel. I was not bothered to, so I just ran the equation twice. Um, so let's go back to the sheet. Um, basically, we had the equation done once, so we have a new HP for ours and which is 40,360. And I apply the entire thing again, but with HP of 42,300 speed. So I just redo it backwards again. So now instead of 3,900, we have 3,500 status. If we go back to poison tables, uh, that means we no longer do six status props. We now only do five status props. Uh, so that means that uh, we're going to do five status props, which means your damage changes. So the real final HP is 43,110. Um, but yeah, so basically once we have that, uh, we can proceed. Um, and then we can calculate the EFD by basically saying, okay, we reduce the monster's damage by some value status damage. Um, so we just need to figure out this factor that the damage changes by, which is just monster HP divided by monster HP minus status damage. That's the factor we multiply it by. So if I go here, um, we have this factor, uh, 0 0.92. Um, so I, well, it's one divided by 0 0.92. So I divide that through and I get 823.5. Uh, and yeah, that's our EFD for status. Uh, relatively straightforward. Um, and yeah, basically this just means that, uh, bring it all together. For Sandra, we have an EFD of 75.3. For element, we have 815.9, and for status, we have 823.5. In other words, status is the best. Um, and yeah, so actually, that was basically the last slide. Uh, and yeah, so this sheet is, I think, relatively powerful. Basically, we can change things relatively easily. Um, oh yeah, and it all comes together in this compiled sheet over here. So here we have like the if the numbers I mentioned earlier. So for uh, element, 8.2.9, for poison, 8.2.3.5, for raw, I didn't count that, but raw is just the baseline. And yeah, so the best one is poison. I also have a lost one over here as well. 
And yeah, so if I want to create, for example, a if I want to like change my build details, I can here. So we can just change this number, for example. Let's say we have a long story that has like, you know, 1100 raw and like 500 element, dragon element. Um, that should change effectively elements. And now the, the best long sword is going to be this ab fill with the 1100 raw. Um, which is going to be 1100 in this case. But yeah, so basically you can just change these things easily. So this ab fill does 44% more damage than basic because I gave it really huge numbers. And I can do the same thing with poison, of course. Um, you can say, oops, good poison weapons. Say this one, uh, Malice, does you know, 5,000 damage. Uh, it's going to be super strong. Let's go to Poison Mons. And yeah, the best one is going to be Malice. If I go all the way to the end, yep, Malice does 5 to 5% more damage. And if I do the full comparison in Compiled, we can see that yeah, Malice is easily going to be the best one. So yeah, the spreadsheet is relatively powerful in terms of comparing all of these different things. And yeah, basically this is how you compare and calculate status. So for and elements, so for element you basically figure out the damage numbers for the damage ratio between raw and element, multiply it together. For status, you figure out the total status damage numbers and figure it out as a ratio of total damage and multiply that through. Uh, yeah, uh, the equations are on the left, spreadsheet is on the right, both in the descriptions, and I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.